Thanks for joining us for this morning's time of worship with the Twickenham Park Open Bible Church here in Jamaica. We pray that you'll be blessed and encouraged by what is about to be shared. Good morning. Good morning. We give praise unto our God for his goodness and his mercy and his love unfailing. We serve a faithful God. I just want to share a word from scripture this morning. Reading from Psalm 33, verse one to verse nine. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. Praise the Lord with harp. Sing unto him with the psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud voice. For the word of the Lord is right and all his works are done in truth. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathereth the waters of the sea together as an heap. He layeth up the depth in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. This is the God we have come to worship this morning, a faithful God, an awesome God, an omnipotent God. And it gives us comfort because we know that given that this God is so powerful, is so awesome, that even by his word, life is created even by his word, anything and everything happens. We are confident that regardless what our challenge is, our God is able. Amen? Yeah, man, our God is able. And so we look to him. I'm going to ask the worship team to come at this time so that we may... Join in psaltery and harp and raise our voices. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And that's why we're here this morning. To worship him, to lift him up, and to hear from him. Worship team. Morning, brothers and sisters. We have come into his house. We have gathered in his name <clears throat> to worship him. Can we just do that for us a couple of times? Just to remind ourselves of the purpose for which we are here. We have come into his house, gathered in his name to worship. We 
ourselves. Let's forget about ourselves. Concentrate on Him and worship Him. Let's forget about ourselves. Concentrate on Him. something to say to him this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Say something to your Lord and your master this morning. Give him thanks. Hallelujah. We bless you and we praise you, Lord Jesus, for this morning. We thank you for life. We thank you for the opportunity to be in your presence. We thank you, Lord, that all our faculties are in place. We thank you for health and for strength. We thank you that you have delivered us from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. We thank you this morning for freedom to come into your presence, for freedom to be able to worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We pray that you help us not to take this in vain, Lord Jesus, but to really appreciate what you have done for us this morning. Cause that as we raise our voices to give you thanks, as we raise our voices to praise you, we pray that our praise would come before you this morning as a sweet smelling savor. Hallelujah. And that your presence will abide with us this morning as we worship you. Help us to worship you in spirit and in truth. For Lord, you seek such people to worship you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. We realize this morning, brothers and sisters, that our worship without the presence of the Holy Spirit is nil. 
And so this morning, we're focusing on the presence of the Holy Spirit with us and in us this morning. And so you will notice that all the songs that we will sing this morning refer to the presence of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit makes a difference in our lives and it's the Holy Spirit that makes a difference in our worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to begin this morning with a song, Welcome Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Holy Spirit We are in your presence Fill us with your power Fill us with your power Live inside of me Welcome Holy Spirit We are in your presence Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome. that you're playing, Ryan. gathered together in my name. Hallelujah. I am there. Amen. We know for certainty that the Lord is here this morning. But while we welcome him in this place, yeah. brothers and sisters, I want us to entertain his presence. Because yes, you can welcome someone in your midst, but what you do thereafter doesn't make them feel welcoming. I'm just saying this morning, we have asked the Holy Spirit, we have welcomed him into our presence, and we know that he is here. 
Let us entertain his presence by what we do and how we do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our next song says, Holy Spirit, rain down. And brothers and sisters, I want us to get excited this morning because we are in the presence of the Lord. I know like the daddy, daddy singing. And you're just, I mean, don't tell me this song is not an upbeat song. I know it's not an upbeat song. But we can sing with life and with excitement. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because we know that the presence of the Lord is here. And that is enough to make us excited this morning. Can I hear a shout of praise this morning? Hallelujah. Can I hear a hallelujah this morning? Hallelujah. Get excited. Let's get excited for the presence of the Lord is in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, rain down. Holy Spirit, rain down. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The songwriter says, Lord, we need your touch again. Hallelujah. How many of us need that touch again? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is here in our midst. He's ready to touch us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for your presence here, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Continue to work among your people. Hallelujah. 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 Sweet, sweet anointing. I hear that's a long time. That's an old song. But it is forever true that we need the sweet, sweet anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sweet, sweet anointing. Pouring down to make me clean. Like a mighty rushing. There is a sweet anointing in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's entertain the presence of God this morning. Yes, we entertain him with our praise. We entertain him with our worship. Let us ask the Holy Spirit, stay right here with us. Hallelujah. Let's entertain the Spirit of God this morning. For without a doubt, we know that he's in this place. Hallelujah. 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 Come and lay 
one more time. morning. Come and lay down the burdens, the worries, the cares, the concerns that you are carrying because I know we have them. But the invitation is to us this morning. Come lay them down at Jesus' feet because he is here. Hallelujah. 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 He is here. The presence of the Lord is in this place. Hallelujah. 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 He is here. Hallelujah. He is here. Amen. He is here. Holy, holy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us continue to entertain the presence of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 The one we are here for, he is here. The one who heals the heart and mends the broken, he is here. The one who knows your thoughts, the one who knows your feelings, the one who knows the things you can't say out loud, he is here. We welcome you here, Holy Spirit. We welcome you into this place and into our hearts. Oh, oh may we open our hearts to you today. Because it is one thing to acknowledge you in the congregation, in the community. But it's another thing to acknowledge you for myself. 
It's another thing to acknowledge you as an individual. Because as an individual, I am going through some stuff. I am dealing with some things. There are some things you, you want to deal with me about. So I acknowledge, we acknowledge that you are here, almighty God. And in that same respect, we move into intercessory prayer. Acknowledging even more how here he is. Are there any spoken requests? Sick brethren and Christians in Ukraine. Sick nephew in hospital. Unspoken requests. When I ask you to stand as our deacon Maurice Hamilton comes to pray, may we position and ready our hearts. Morning, church. Praise is a form of worship, right? All right, we're going to continue, but there's a little song upon my heart from in a week, and Brian just confirmed that we all need to say it a little bit. So, now mind the singing. Just help me out, yeah? Into my heart, into my heart, Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Okay. The shoulder, I pray, come in to my heart. Lord Jesus, one more time, into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today, come in, I pray, come in to my heart, Lord Jesus. For God, the ear device of people. This morning, we acknowledge your presence at Twickenham Park. We know you're bigger than Twickenham Park, but we welcome your presence here so this morning. Knowing that you are our Lord, you are our Savior, you are our protector, you are our provider. You brought us here from home this morning safely. Some of us might have some near misses on the way, but nonetheless, you protect me. So we give thanks. We give thanks for the ability to stand up this morning and be able to hold our hands and say hallelujah. hallelujah. We give thanks, Jesus. We give thanks. We give thanks for the little things that we take for granted. Fresh air that we breathe every morning we get up. To be able to go next door and beg up a spoon of sugar or two. To enjoy the sun when it shines, the rain when it falls. Those little things we take for granted, we give thanks. The petition of the people this morning, Jesus, is to the sick among us. You have sick people in the hospital. You have a nephew. 
somebody of our aunt, somebody of our sister, or our brother. You know every situation. You know every ailment. You alone, you alone, Papa God, can say, hey, rise. Your sickness is healed. I will believe that this morning. We believe that. We put before you this morning the young people. They are most distracted at anything else because of the great internet. It is so easy for them to be led astray. It is so easy for them to put their parents in trouble. Give us the parents, the patience, the wisdom to guide them. Because on our own, we can't do it. So we need the Holy Spirit to guide us. Jesus, this morning, we also want to put before you the government of this land. Open their minds to think about the people and not the friends alone. Open their eyes to share with the lesser people. People who can get up this morning and put on a pot of water. Let them to be considerate, Lord. Help them because nobody help can come from but you. And we acknowledge that again this morning. Because you are the big bad, big bad God. And no government can stand up to you. Every one of them I forgot about. Lord, as we continue to worship you today, we put the service the rest of the service to you in your hands. I pray that the word this morning, when it comes, it comes with power, it comes with clarity. And I pray this morning that it touch even one individual, even one. Let it not be that the way they come here this morning is the same way they leave. I pray that the word that will trouble their heart and change your mind this morning. We give thanks, Jesus. Everything we put in your hand because we know that you will provide. We give thanks in a precious, holy, matchless, and mighty name. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. All right. Um, I am your moderator for this morning. My name is Brian Beadle, and welcome to Twickenham Park Open Bible Church. Thank you for coming here. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you for making this place your house of worship. For those who are new, thanks for being here. For those who are not new and our family, big up on yourself. All right. So we'll now have the scripture reading that will be led by our sister, Paulette Allen. And it will be taken from Philippians 1, verse 15 to 30. Right after, we'll have the welcome by our own Reverend Everell Edwards. So that's Philippians 1, verse 15 to 30. When you have found it, please stand. Good morning. Our scripture reading is taken from Philippians 1 from verse 15 to 30. Some indeed pre preach Christ, even from envy and strife, and some also from goodwill. The former preach Christ from selfish ambition, not sincerely supporting to add affliction to my chains, but the latter out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel. What then, only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and in this I rejoice, yea, 
and will rejoice. For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance, even through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. According to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me I live in Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live on in the flesh, this will mean fruit for my labor. Yet what shall I choose? I cannot tell. For I am hard pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is for better. Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is more meaningful for you. And being confident of this, I know that I shall remain and continue with you for all your progress and joy of faith. That your rejoicing for me may be more abundant in Jesus Christ by my coming to you again. Only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ so that whether I come and see you or I am absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you may stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. And not in any way terrified by your adversities, which is then a proof of prediction, but to you of salvation and that from God. For to you it is being granted on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake. 30 and last, having the same conflict which you saw in me and now hear in me. Here ended the reading of God's holy word. Thank you, Sister Paulette. Good morning, everyone. We're going to try that again. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, man, that sounds more like it. And welcome to worship at Church of the Open Bible, Twickenham Park. We want to welcome those of us who are worshiping in the house for the first time, as well as those persons who are joining us, whether by Zoom or YouTube, whatever it is, welcome. Especially for those who are worshiping here, and it's your first time, would you please stand? We want to recognize you specially. If it's your first time ever here, would you please stand? Welcome. 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 No, I, I fear I may get myself into trouble, but we have a little basket up here with some tokens that we want to, or first timers to have. Um, just to remember your first visit. So if you don't mind, each first timer, you may come and just take one of the tokens from the basket here. Normally, we would come to you, but with respect for the recommended social distancing and all that kind of thing, if you have no regular place of worship, we encourage you, we invite you, we'd be glad to have you worshiping with us in the future. But more than anything else, we pray that as you worship with us this morning, God would meet a need in your life that you may encounter him in, in a way you, you've never before. Let's put our hands together again for our first time. Us. And, and if you are a first timer, on online, 
please indicate. The moderator will make note, acknowledge you, and we will be in touch if you so desire. Anybody celebrated a birthday during the course of this week? Brother Andrew, that was when, yesterday or the day before? Happy birthday to you, Andrew. Andrew is the gentleman in the red shirt to the back. Anybody else? Or Sister Claudette Hall beating a hasty retreat. Happy birthday. And anybody else? No. How about wedding anniversaries? Anybody celebrated a wedding anniversary? No. We want to encourage prayer for the Christians in particular in the Ukraine this morning. There are persons who have purposed that they are not leaving the country because they want to stay and make the name of Jesus Christ known. There are pastors who have reported that they are not leaving because they want to maintain a witness in the country. We have our own crime and violence situations, but at least we're still free to decide who governs us, and so on and so forth. The, the people in the Ukraine are, are, do not have that choice currently. In exercising that choice, somebody bigger and presumptuously badder than them has decided that we want you to be part of us and you don't have no say in the matter. We want to remember our brothers and sisters and pray too for those Christians in places that don't have the freedom to worship like we do. There, there are countries, developed countries supposedly, and richer countries than ourselves, who if they find out that you are a Christian, then take away your land, mash up your house, and run you out of town. And if that is what happened to you, you're lucky because some people are dying for their faith today, elsewhere. So let's be praying. We're going to invite persons who have brought children for dedication. If you would come to the front, stand facing the platform and the invitation is open to fathers and mothers, aunts and uncles, the, the, the whole village responsible for raising the children. Again, the, the encouragement is to, as much as possible, if you are not from the same house, that you try and keep some kind of distance, all right? That is, stand beside mommies, all right, and, and to to let it be known to that, again, because of the COVID recommendations, we don't take the baby and kiss them currently, but we still dedicate them to God. Clear? All right. The act of giving our children back to God is a distinct 
practice from baptism. Baptism is reserved for that public statement of our accepting Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord of our lives. But we have example, precedent in the scriptures of Jesus blessing children that were brought to him. And in doing that, he was saying to the parents and saying to those looking on that children are important in God's scheme of things. They're not just the product of our enjoyment or our desire to extend the family line. They are God's heritage, God's gift to us. And by virtue of that, we have a serious responsibility in raising them up in a way that is a blessing to family, blessing to community, and pleasing to God himself. The Bible says, train up the child in the way that he should go. When he's old, he will not depart from it. In Matthew chapter 13, 19, verse 13, we read, Then little children were brought to Jesus, that he might put his hands on them and pray. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But Jesus said, Leave the children alone. Allow the little ones to come to me and do not forbid or hinder them, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he put his hands upon them and then went on his way. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, we thank you for the consciousness that these parents, friends, wider family members are showing this morning in the fact that your way is the best way in which to train up their children. They are giving back their children to you. We know that children are the heritage of the Lord. They are the gift that God gives to us. We are accountable to you for how they go. Save us, Lord God, from getting in their ways like the disciples were inclined to do because they didn't have the right sense of value such as you had on these young lives. I pray, Lord God, for the parents this morning that we would purpose in our hearts that in giving our children to you, it is the recognition that your way is the way to go. We're committing ourselves as parents to be the examples to these children since they live what they learn. And that home is probably the best foundation in education and values that our children will learn. I ask, O oh God, that you would equip these parents in every respect that they will need to train up these children in the way they should go. Provide for them spiritually and emotionally, materially, financially, in every respect. Lord God, help mothers and fathers in particular to be intentional, deliberate, purposeful in wanting to see their seed grow up to be blessings to the environment, the community in which they will grow. Hear our prayer, we ask you. In Jesus' name.
Amen. Tell me, is I him right? Baby is I. Tell me your full name. Ethan Fitzgerald Alexander Bloomfield. Okay. Ethan Alexander Fitzgerald Bloomfield. We dedicate you to God in the name of the Father and of the Holy Ghost, the Son, for his glory. Amen. Amelia Mackenzie Brown, we dedicate you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Elijah Mark Anthony Allen, we dedicate you back to God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. This is our sister Sharon Anderson's grandson. Yeah. God bless you. We, we, you will get a call shortly when to pick up the dedication certificates. You may return to your seats. Let's put our hands together for the families. Okay. Round of applause for the parents and dedication of these children back to God. Hallelujah. All right, so we know we'll be having um, the hymn higher ground which will be led by our praise and worship team and right after our sister hope dunbar will be doing the announcements
utmost height and catch a glimpse of glory bright. But still I'll pray, but still I'll pray till heaven I found. Lord, plant my feet, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up, Lord, lift me up, and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land. Lord, a higher place than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on high. I want to live above the world. I want to live above the world. church family here are the announcements for February 27 2022 bear with me it's going to be a lengthy one Tuesday evening Bible study begin at 7 30 p.m. for the month of March these sessions will be led by our pastor Reverend Everell Edwards topic what do we believe what do we believe about rebirth baptism sanctification and justification. The link to these meetings will be sent in the church's WhatsApp group, Invite a Friend. Prayer and fasting is held every Wednesday beginning at 10 a.m. Feel free to join us or to send your prayer requests. This Wednesday will, be, will, not, be, will not meet in person instead we will join the association virtually in a national day of prayer and fasting, beginning at 8 a.m. See the church's WhatsApp group for the link. Church's website, do you want to watch replays of Sunday services and Bible studies? Do you have a testimony to share? Do you want to learn more about church's beliefs? Are you looking to for resources to help you on your Christian walk. We've established our church's website to address all those needs. If your answer is yes, then you are invited to explore our church's website at www.twignampark.obc.com. It will be a blessing. Church of the Open Bible, Twignam Park presents Strengthen Your Marriage, a panel discussion. This will be led by Kevin and Mural Bailey, Christopher and Janet Sr. Join us as we discuss exploring how to help marriages withstand the shock of adverse events such as COVID-19. This Sunday, February 27 at 6 p.m. The link will be sent to the church's WhatsApp group. Our 2022 devotionals, a few large copies of the 2022 devotionals are still available at a cost of $1,000 each. 
You may purchase your copy at the visitor's booth after the service or from the church's office on Mondays, Wednesdays, or Fridays. We encourage persons to support the Caring Hands Project, especially at this time when the need is great. You can do so by taking your non-perishables or food items and toiletries each Sunday morning and place them in the Caring Hands container labeled and located at the entrance of the sanctuary to the right of the pulpit. Are you still with me? Okay. A special announcement from the Music and Arts Department. Technical support. Two years ago, some of our members answered the call to establish a digital presence for our church and we have consistently seen where as a church we have benefited from what is shared online. The ministry is now ready to expand. If you have the desire to join in the action through camera operation, project management, YouTube moderation or sound management, we want to hear from you. You will be trained in the respective area, so all you'll need to do is avail yourself in answering the call. To sign up, please email T-P-O-P-E-N-B-I-B-L-E at gmail.com. Let me repeat, T-P-O-P-E-N-B-I-B-L-E at gmail.com. Or speak with Deacon Brian Beadle or Brother Andrew Edwards. Solo ministry, many of us have been given the unique gift of song, but have somehow been silent especially over the past two years. Whether you were in the choir, you're currently on the praise team, or you've actually never sang officially in this church, keep listening. The calling to minister to others through song is a unique one, a privilege, really. God has specifically given you the opportunity to encourage, facilitate, deliverance, worship, and truly serve others through your vessel. If you are ready to say yes to God in this unique way, now is the time. This is your invitation to join the ministry by emailing t-p-o-p-e-n-b-i-b-l-e at gmail.com. Again, let me repeat. T-P-O-P-E-N-B-I-B-L-E at gmail.com or speak to Sister Charmaine Marie Beadle or Sister Krista Fuller. Training is available where desired, so you all definitely receive support. You will, sorry, definitely receive support for your vocal development. Still with me? Please be reminded that Sunday school classes will be face-to-face -face today immediately after service. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. The locations for the classes are as follows. Ages 3 to 8, Bible study room at the front. 9 to 12, the AC slash music room. 13 to 17, Bible study room to the back. Ages 18 to 24, 25 to 35, 36 to 49, and 50 and over will meet at their usual places to the back of the sanctuary near the doors. We continue to pray for a meaningful experience as we seek to develop fellowship through exploring God's word together. Let's sharpen God's tool through Sunday school. Have a blessed Sunday. Thank you. All right. Answer no. We will worship through our tithes and offering. As you may know, normally we would carry around the baskets, but due to protocols, we have them on the right and on the left. And so therefore, all you would have to do is come up with your tithes and offering and enter them into the baskets. Um, right after, as I always say, we'll, have, we'll now have the best time of the service, which is the word. And that word will be led by our own elder Desmond Ashman. And we pray that it will truly be a word 
for all of us, or at least for one person today. Let us pray. Most righteous and heavenly Father, we just want to thank you, almighty Father, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, O Lord, for what you have done in our lives financially and through resources. And it is because of that mighty God. It is because of your love for us. It is because of how grateful we are, almighty God, that we get the privilege to participate in what you are doing on this earth that we bring back, O oh Lord, only a tenth of what you've, you've given so much of, O oh Lord. That we bring back the extra almighty God that you, from what you have given so much to us, O oh God. Help us to remember that this is an act of gratitude, a participation in what you are doing with your kingdom on this earth. Help us to understand that, that uh, in, in giving so, mighty Father, it is being placed in the church's responsibility, the leader's responsibility, to follow you and to make the right decisions and right moves, mighty God, that honor you. We thank you. We bless your mighty name even now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Morning, brothers and sisters present here in the house and to those who are listening to us through other means. Morning to you all and may God bless you. Can we bow our heads, everybody? Our Father, we come into your presence. We give you honor and glory and praise. We pray, Lord God, that as your word go forth, it might find roots in the hearts of your people circumstances and lives will be changed and that our call upon our lives, O oh God, will be for the better of our own living. Father, we hear our cry this morning as we look unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning, it's kind of ironic that we, we sang the song, the song that we sang was, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Well, my theme to us this morning is stand your ground. <laughs> so I don't know how we're going to work that out, but you're going to see how it plays out in the end. Stand your ground. And we just sung, Lord, plant my feet on a higher ground. Now, the, the scripture that was read, what the background of it all is that the Apostle Paul was imprisoned and there was some contention in the church in his absence and he was trying to kind of address those concerns. There was some concern amongst the brethren and some of his colleagues were trying to use his imprisonment to undermine his ministry because he wasn't there. There were unjust persecution taking place. There was unfair criticism concerning the apostle and this would have caused some concern amongst the brethren. Now, when I read the story in Philippians 1, I see the apostle behaving in a very unique way. Now, for most of us, for me, if I was locked up, if I was in prison, probably depression would be killing me. I, I would feel down. I would say, but how can I be serving God and 
him allow me to be in prison. But the apostle was rejoicing and he was sounding very upbeat in his spirit and even encouraging other members, other brethren to rejoice. Now, I will tell you that is not, I'm not saying that is easy. Because chances are if I am in prison, I'm trying to get myself out more than anything else. But Paul wasn't so concerned about being released from prison. What he was concerned about was the operation of the church in his absence. He wanted to make sure that things were running smoothly even, he, even though he wasn't there. To the extent that probably he, he wasn't even thinking of being there because he never knew what would have happened. Paul, in verse 20 of the scripture that we read, he was saying that the important thing is not living or dying. Paul was saying that these were side issues. The critical matter is that Christ be magnified in my body. I'm asking the question this morning, is Christ magnified in our bodies? In other words, that is, he's saying, when I am looked at, when I am assessed, my life becomes a telescope which brings Christ closer to those looking on. That is what it is, is meant by him being magnified in my body. When people look at me, when I move around people or persons, they must be able to see Christ in me. And I must be a kind of magnet that attracts them. And in addition to that, I must magnify him. In other words, he be seen large in my life and my affairs. And we must ask the question of ourselves. We must do the self-assessment. Is Christ magnified in me? Does my life depict a crucified and a risen Christ? Does my life serve as a catalyst to propel or to draw others to him? Because trust me, brothers and sisters, people are looking on us. And when they look to us or when they look on us, they must see the Christ in us. So our lives must be a magnet that draws people to him. There is only one thing that should really captivate the attention and the desire of the believer. One thing should hold our imagination, and that is our total manner of life be found worthy of the gospel of Christ. Because remember the Bible says, to whom much is given, much more is required. What does God require from a church that has been given much? Or let me ask the question, as a church, do you think that we have been given much by God? I didn't hear the answer. Okay. So if we have been given much, the question is, what does God require from us as a church that has been given much? What does he require from me that has been given much? What does he require from you that has been given much? Say, let verse 37, 27 says, say only let your conduct that is your whole manner of life 
be worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In other words, let the knowledge that we have, the understanding of the gospel of Christ, let it regulate all that we do and all that we say as we traverse down the corridors of life. So our bodies, our, the way we move, the things we do, must show the gospel to be worthy. We cannot be claiming of, to have the gospel message and the life that we live is not worthy of that gospel. So how do we accomplish this task? The question I'm saying to us this morning, to accomplish all these tasks, let us stand firm. Let us stand fast in one spirit. The word stand there means to hold your ground. The Bible says stand fast. In other words, to hold your ground. Make sure you hold on to that ground that God has given you. You see, I want us to, to imagine that we get this nice piece of property. Valuable, well established, have everything that we need. And we do everything to protect it. We fence it round and we make sure, say, nothing now come inside if we destroy. I'm saying to us, fence round the ground that God has given you. Protect it. Stand on it. Stand on it because it is yours. Don't forget that there's a war taking place on this ground. Because Satan probably feels it too good for us. But I'm saying, fence him out. Lock your gate if necessary. Stand your ground. This is not a time to, to get negative and wanting to give up. This is not a time to give in to the enemy. The Bible says that we should give him no place. Never give him a foothold into the fellowship of believers. The time has come, brothers and sisters, where we as believers must start living like a family. I say that again. We as believers must start living as a family. I speak to the church in general but trust me, I'm speaking to the brethren at Twickenham Park in particular. We must start living like a family. Amen? Amen? Amen. There are too much pockets of segmented believers. And it is time for us as brothers and sisters to be to become our brother's keeper our sister's keeper let us unite and tear down the walls of partition that divides us brethren let us not pretend let us not pretend there is a wall there is a partition that is tending or wanting to divide us. I'm saying let us tear it down and the time is now. Tear down social barriers. Tear down economic barriers. Tear down financial barriers. Those barriers are not designed by God for his people. I'm here to tell us this morning that the same God who provides and show love to the people, anybody live, live here in Jacksonville? No. The same God that provides and loves the people that lives in Jacksonville is the same God that provides and loves the people, let me use my place, that lives in Signum Garden. Same God. So what am I saying? Not because 
you live in Jackson and I live in Tivoli Gardens or Rima, you figure that there is a different God. Is this the same God? He is no respecter of person. He is no respecter of person. I'm saying to us, the only way that the gospel of Christ can be magnified in us is if we start to treat each others and live with each others as they are our own. We are to stand. Ephesians, the Bible says, Therefore, having girded your waist with the truth, having put on the blessed spirit of righteousness, let us stand. Retreating Christians bring dishonor to the gospel of Christ. Anytime a Christian starts to retreat, the Bible describes it as crucifying Christ afresh. Stand fast. Hold your ground. Because there is it is a constant pressure coming from the devil and coming from the world. It is not easy, brethren, to hold your ground, but we have to hold it. There's a pressure. Sometimes the pressure, we can't even feel it and we can't even see it. I'll give you a little one. Every morning when I'm to get up to go to work and my clock ring, I get up feeling fine and Go on about my business, make it on time, make it early. Every Sunday morning, my clock ring the same time. I mean, I have less to do. Now I find myself just like me, I diggle that around the house and can't leave. How do I explain it? Me not know. But what I recognize is that there's a constant war going on, and these war. No, but I believe the devil has come to us with a sword in our hand and a knife over our head, you know. Can you know, say so we are going to run if we see that? In coming ways that we don't even recognize. And these are distractions. These are causing us to give up some ground. Now, listen carefully now. Some people, not, not people like us, but some people might find it easier to gain new ground than to hold on to the ground that you already have. Make it digest a little bit. Me tell you, say, stand your ground. You sing, say, plant my feet on higher ground. Here am I saying to you now, some people find it very challenging and difficult to hold on to the ground that you already have. You find it easier to seek new ground. I'm not hearing an amen. It is, <laughs> it is easier in some cases to gain a victory than to hold on to that victory. Am I making sense? It might be easier to be filled with the Holy Spirit than to stay filled. Look, this is different. Stay filled. Paul said be filled. We must, be, we must stay filled. So you, you get the impression that there is a war trying to pressure us not to hold on unto what we have. There is a constant pressure to give up ground. And I'm going to tell you the importance of holding ground. Exodus 23, 29 gives us a, a, a good insight. This was the God giving the Israelites some land. God said to them, but I will not drive out the inhabitants in a single year. I won't do that. Because the Lord became, the, the, the land will become desolate 
and wild animals would overtake the land. There was a whole heap of land. And the question is that we are saying that if God is going to give you the land, why he not just drive out the people them one time and give us the land? God said, no. He said, no. He said, if I drive out everybody out of the land and give to you, first of all, you know, have enough people. So the land, I'm going to turn back bush again, now hold for wine animal. I'm going to take over the land. But the importance of that scripture is that in warfare, whatever you conquer, you must occupy. It not make sense you conquer the whole of Spanish town and you can't occupy Spanish town because somebody has to come back and take it from you anyhow. So in warfare, in asking God for new ground, in asking him to lift us up a higher ground, Brethren, I put it to you that we must consolidate, we must hold on, we must be in charge of the ground that we now have. You can't take on more things and you can't manage what you have. Now, it's as if you you have a plate of food in front of you and you're eating it and yes your eye still on the in the pot you can finish what you have you know you don't finish that and your eye in the pot i'm saying eat what you have on your plate first and if you want some more or you need some more you go back to the pot don't go into the pot before you're ready to go in the pot amen I don't even know what pot mean. I don't know say to have some food. <laughs> As a church, brothers and sisters, God wants to give us new ground. Wow. That is what we want to hear. God wants to give us new ground. But he wants to make certain that we are holding on to the ground we already have. So hear me now. There's an offer waiting. Here is new ground. New grounds are available. For God, one thing with God, he never run out of ground yet. He may always have ground. So the brother feels, say, well, me have to go rush to go get some ground because the ground soon done. Ground will always be available. But make sure you can take care of the one that you have first. Because, remember me tell you, you know, to whom much is given? Eh? Much more. So you're hall of a new ground? Be careful. Because when you get new ground, you're going, you're going to be expected to do something with the new ground. Amen? There's going to be a challenge on the new ground. So make sure you are ready to, for the new ground. The question is, is as a church, how well do we manage what we already have? How well are we managing? How well are we maintaining those who God has given us? How well are we maintaining the quality of our praise and worship, how well are we managing our family relationships in terms of our church brothers and sisters. Some people might find it easy to gain new ground, but God is saying that you have to hold on to what you have until you can manage it. To whom much is given, much more is required. To whom much has been entrusted 
of him, they will ask more. So if new grounds are entrusted to us, we are going to be asked for more. You know, there's an inner tendency for us to want to give up ground. Hosea 11, 7 says, my people are bent on backsliding from me. The question is, is it easier to backslide or to hold one ground? These are just questions. Is it easier not to pray than to pray? Question. Is it easier not to read the Bible than to read it? Is it easier not to share our faith than to witness to someone? Those are just questions. Verse 27 of the scripture that we read says, With one mind striving for the faith of the gospel of Christ. We must, as a church, strive one mind for the faith of the gospel of Christ. Now the word striving there, it indicates that it is, all not, it is not always easy to walk together. But God expects us to make the effort to work together as a church. Satan's efforts are designed to divide, to cause jealousy, bitterness, anger and hurt in our feelings to be successful in ministry brothers and sisters i urge us together we must be about one goal first corinthians 1 and 10 paul say i now plead with you that there be no division amongst you and you may be perfected in mind and thought. Matthew 12, 25 says, Every kingdom divided against itself shall be, shall be destroyed. Romans 16, 17, We urge you to watch out for those who cause division and keep away from them. God isn't expecting us to walk in our victory. We must not be frightened away by those begrudging our victory, standing up for what the Bible says, will be a sign to them that they will be destroyed. We are in a battle, and brethren, it's getting a little bit hotter. And the only way to be victorious is to stand our ground, take instructions from the commander-in-chief, who is Jesus Christ himself. He expects us to listen to him. He expects us to hear his call. I remember, I recall his message to the seven churches in Asia. And one common theme that, read, that went through everything there was, he who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the spirit of Christ says to the church. Jesus is very focused this morning on bringing our lifestyles into conformity to his pleasure and his will. I have some hints here of how we hold on to our ground. Never lose sight. The Bible said, never lose sight of our first love. If our lives, this is speaking to the church, in Ephesus, if our lives become clogged up with too much things, then Jesus might not be the first place in our hearts. He needs to be and must be the supreme ruler of our lives. To hold our ground, we must separate our lives from sin. To the saints in Paragamos, they were accused of not being faithful to the true doctrine of Christ. They were, they were sacrificing to idols, committing sexual immorality, of which things Jesus says he hate. Jesus called for all respective, don't be contaminated by the world, and strive to please him by separating ourselves from sin that can defile our very hearts, minds, and spirits. 
We cannot, we cannot live what is described as a pleasure-filled, dominated life. That is if that was affecting the church in Tyra Tyra, a pleasure-filled life. We must become unfriendly to the world, to hold our grounds. We cannot be friendly with the world. We must become unfriendly with the world. John told us, do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. We have two choices. We can love the world or we can choose to love God. We can obey the world or obey God, but we can't do the both of them at the same time. Now, when I speak of the world, I'm not really speaking about a place. I'm speaking about a system. It is a way of thinking and living that rejects God, the rule of God. That's what I, when I talk about the world. A system that rejects the rule of God. It is an enthusiasm for temporal things. In other words, a rush, a, an excitement for temporal things. And an apathy for the things eternal. In other words, worldliness don't gravitate to things that are eternal. It gravitates to things that are temporal. Those who live in the world will if, 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 you see, if we live in the world, we eventually will succumb to worldliness. And the worldliness is a failure to renew our minds by the word of God. It is a failure to think and live in godly ways. Worldliness don't, don't gravitate us to live in godly ways. All in all, it is a failure to become who God wants us to be. So brothers and sisters, in closing today, I encourage us, fix, let us fix our eyes on the prize, stay focused, and most of all, stand your ground. God bless you. God bless you. Indeed, we are challenged this morning because of all of what is happening around us and in light of what is happening around us to stand our ground. And standing our ground is, is not in conflict with the desire for higher ground. It is because we want higher ground that we hold on to what we have here and now. And God has been very clear in what he has reminded us of this morning, that his call to us, his encouragement to us, is that we don't lose sight of what we have and the path that he has called us onto. The pressures are there, the temptations are there, and, and uh, I, I can identify with what Brother Desi just said, that some of, some of what distracts us is not ugly, adverse attacks. It's some subtle indulgences that we like, and yet still they eat away at our time with God. We get so busy pursuing stuff and, 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 and lose out on the important things of our fellowship with God and our being witnesses for him. A timely word. Don't cast away your confidence in which we have great rewards. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I wonder if there is anybody among us this morning, you're not a Christian, but you want to commit your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. 
you want to surrender to him. Anybody like that, would you raise your hand? I'd like to pray with you. If you're here and you're not a Christian, but you want to commit your life to Christ. No. Let's bow our heads together. In fact, let, let's stand. May I invite you? We thank you this morning, great God, for the reminder that has come to us to stand or ground. Paul in Ephesians chapter 6 reminded us repeatedly that we should stand and having done all, stand. We don't stand, we can't stand in our own strength. And so Lord, we ask you this morning yet again in the face of temptation and anxieties in the face of the fears that abound, we ask you, Lord, to grant us the willingness, the desire to stand. We are encouraged, Lord, to stand in the whole armor of God. An armor not designed for retreat, armor that we must put on by your spirit we must become engaged in the assurances knowing that we are saved having on a helmet of salvation our feet prepared with the gospel everywhere we go a breastplate of righteousness a belt of truth, a shield of faith, and a sword of the Spirit. God grant us to be alert, to be mindful of how you have equipped us, what we have at our disposal, rather than relying on our own strength and the learning of men, the ways of men, Help us to stand in the armor you have provided. Hear our prayer, we ask you this morning. And Lord God, the days are evil. You, are, you, you're, you encourage us again that we must redeem the times because the days are urgent. Souls are dying. Our neighbors need to hear. We are called to be witnesses for you. Our lives must reflect, must be found worthy of this good news that we proclaim and profess. Grant us, we pray, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that we might be in tune with what you require of us and obedient to doing it, relying on him to be our strength and our enabler. Hear our prayer, we ask you. In Jesus' name, amen. Just before the benediction, to remind us of the panel discussion this afternoon on Zoom, strengthening your marriage. We, we have some reservations about the, the capacity of Zoom to take the anticipated numbers of participants. So if you, if you come on or try to get on Zoom, and it don't work, then we are encouraging you to go to the church's website because the intention is to put a link from the website to the Zoom presentation.
So just as a little, in case you come at five past six and you can't get on, try YouTube, the church's website. I know unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his throne with exceeding great joy to the only wise God and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, be glory, dominion, majesty, and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. And that's all for this morning's time of worship with the Twitland Park Open Bible Church. We are located at Lot 17, Twitland Park, St. Catherine, Jamaica. If you'd like to get in touch with us, feel free to call us at 876-749-3061 or email hisworkmanshipeph210 at cwjamaica.com. For persons who would like to send an offering via online transfer or direct deposit, you may send to National Commercial Bank Account Number 321-541-410. God's richest blessing to you and yours. Have a great day.